months ago, we replaced our RV roof with Flex Armor on our Class C RV. It has been an absolute game changer for us, and we have totally fallen in love with the Flex Armor product. But we sold that RV and we bought a new one, Dita. Even before we purchased Dita, we knew we wanted to have a Flex Armor roof installed. So we are back at Arizona RV Roof in Prescott to make sure that she gets the quality and the treatment that she deserves in this Flex Armor installation. They took such good care of us when we got our roof repaired after a very wild solar panel fire. You can watch the video about that here. We're at the shop and they're ready to take her back and start to do their magic on the install. We're gonna be showing you why Flex Armor Roofs have become a non-negotiable for us as RV owners and also why RV manufacturers and salespeople are telling you the whole truth about RV roofs. You may be wondering why we are replacing a 2019 RV's roof. It's only three years old, it probably doesn't have any damage, it's still in good condition. We came from having an older RV that was not well maintained on the roof. The previous owners very clearly did not go up there for routine maintenance to check for leaks or tears or to do the annual resealing. We don't wanna to have to deal with that with this new RV. So we are taking preventative measures and investing in a Flex Armor roof. And also having a new roof doesn't necessarily mean that it's in good condition. Tears, leaks, and problems with your roof can happen at any moment, literally the second that you buy it being brand new. When we were at the shop getting our solar fire repair done in October, a two-year-old trailer was getting its roof replaced with Flex Armor. They noticed a minor tear on the rubber roof membrane. When they pulled it back, it revealed a much bigger issue. Remember, this coach is oh. virtually brand new, just two years old. It's like garden soil. Yeah. So as you can tell, you're at the mercy of the glue. Once you get the EPDM or the TPO, it's water based underneath. Once the water gets to it, it automatically just starts delaminating the whole roof. The telltale sign is if it turns white underneath your rubber, um, you've got major problems already. See how it's split in the middle? Yeah. The whole roof is now collapsing in the middle. Ooh, so we went from a two day job to a one week job. RV manufacturers will tell you that a typical RV roof, whether it's rubber or fiberglass, should last anywhere from 10 to 20 years. While that's not false, it's kind of misleading because it takes a lot of effort to make sure that an, a typical RV roof will actually last that long. You need to be up on your roof constantly checking for branch scrapes, which could leave pinholes, that could lead to huge water damage that you won't even realize is happening, plus checking all of your self-leveling lap sealants around every single accessory, not to mention RV roof sealant manufacturers themselves say that you should fully replace the roof sealant on your entire roof every single year, which usually costs around a thousand bucks, depending on the length of your RV. A lot of times, so what happens is the air will come underneath that seal and it eventually blows a bubble going down the freeway. Fiberglass, a lot of people have the misconception that they don't wear out. They typically won't wear out from general use and UV and, and rain and all that kind of stuff. But what we see the damage most of the time is where it rolls over the sides because the fiberglass roofs are usually just glued down on the very flat surface of the roof where they're rolled over on the side, number one, there's not a solid aluminum or metal extrusion or any kind of a backing. That usually comes loose from the RV flexing and it springs back flat and then air gets under it and then rips big chunks off. And that's like every other kind of RV damage. The driver of the RV doesn't even know that it's happening until usually it's too late. Mm -hmm. They see it in the rear view mirror or someone's driving next to them pointing it, saying, hey, you got a problem. RVs aren't cheap. So we took the mindset of why not protect our investment and take away the worry and the hassle of having to do roof maintenance annually. And we also get all of the other benefits that come along with Flex Armor, including increased insulation. It's also going to improve the sound quality. So it's gonna kind of deaden that noise. If you've ever been in an RV when it's raining, it is super duper noisy. This helps bring that down. And of course, the biggest benefit I think is that you never have to go up there to reseal ever again. There's no more caulking. There's no more potential leak points or tears that is completely eliminated, giving you a stress-free experience as you are RVing. We've been in communication with the shop 
for weeks. They have been so tremendous about making sure we understand all of the different options we have for the Flex Armor roof because they're gonna be tearing everything off. So if we're gonna be doing this, we wanna make sure that we take the time to choose and upgrade the items that are necessary or are we reinstalling them? When we arrived at the shop, they invited us onto the scaffolding so that we could take a walk around with the crew here to make sure that we were all on the same page about where things were going and making sure that we understood what areas might need further attention as they start to do the work over the next few days. Something we see very often, the caps will be ripped off of the plumbing vents. If it's just the plumbing vent itself, rain, it's gonna go into your holding tank. Not that big of a deal, but you could fill up your holding tanks pretty quickly. On this case, you will notice there is a hole next to the plumbing vent. That is a hole directly into your roof, so it fills up with water. One of the really big benefits to Flex Armor is we encapsulate that new base that we're gonna put on there. Worst case is if your cap gets ripped off of your plumbing vent, now with the Flex Armor roof, all it can do is go into the holding tank. It won't go down beside the pipe. Mm. So that is a, a key factor on something we do that's pretty different. I got a quote when I first reached out to them to kind of give me an idea of what it could cost. But we're already finding some savings because I sent him our RV's total length, which is 24 feet. And when they got up here, the only part that they actually have to spray on the roof is 20 feet. So I'm gonna go down and meet John and get the updated quote. So it's not a cheap investment for those wondering. I know last time a lot of people asked how much does this cost? It's gonna vary so much for your specific RV and your needs. The shop, Arizona RV Roof, will take into consideration the different components you want to have either deinstalled or installed on your roof. Also, if you have damage to the wood decking underneath your roof, it's going to add more cost to the repair. And then they consider the total length of what's being sprayed onto your roof as well. If you're looking for a budget option, this is definitely not the route to go. But if you want something that's going to last and you want something you never have to worry about again, Flex Armor is the solution. to detail at AZ RV Roof is unreal. You have no idea. This is the shop that you want working on your roof. Hands down, it's the best. Outside, inside, that's how it used to look. Nice and white. You can tell that UV is really starting to take its damage on this unit, so. We highly suggest that you replace these at this point in time. It's just easier and better and more cost effective for a customer to do it now as opposed to doing it later. The guys are about done stripping the roof, which is day one. They just go through and strip all the old accessories off and then start taping and prepping for day two, which is spray. They're telling me that we have a super solid foundation, even though Dita is technically like an economy build, so they used cheaper roof decking materials and stuff than we would have hoped to see. We also have aluminum joists spanning the width of the roof all the way back, which makes it super solid and rigid. And that also means we don't have wooden joists. We never have to worry about those rotting out, which is really awesome. We are installing MaxFan 4500s, which are powered. Dita did not come from the factory with powered fans, so we didn't exactly know if there was gonna be wires ran for powering fans since it didn't come with fans, but to our surprise, it is prepped for power fans. They did find one spot where some water intrusion happened up by the front cap. They don't think it's bad enough that we have to replace any of the wood, but they are gonna add some rigidity with a metal patch plate so that the wood doesn't continue to deteriorate underneath the Flex Armor product. So today is going very smoothly, and I'm excited. Since we still have two RVs, we are sleeping outside of the shop in Maggie. It's really nice. They have a 50 amp plug and water for us here so that you can park comfortably the night before your appointment and be up bright and early to get your roof done. Normally, we would have to move into an Airbnb to get the RV roof installed, but I think it's well worth it to have the roof installed in a controlled environment. Some of the other products like roll-on applications, they tout it being a benefit that they're mobile and they'll come to you, but it's being installed in wherever you're at, which means it's susceptible to weather conditions. If debris or other things fall while the roof is drying, it could impact the quality or the look of the roof when it's finished. So we really like that we are getting our Flex Armor roof installed at a controlled shop and we don't have to be delayed or prolonged by any weather conditions. Today, they are applying the Flex Armor product. They've completely cleaned and prepped the RV roof for spraying. The Flex Armor product is around 3 16ths of an inch thick 
and it dries in six seconds once sprayed. AZ RV Roof does a super thorough job applying three coats in different directions to ensure a uniform thickness and a smooth finish throughout the roof. They clean their gun in between each spray and they also smooth out any rough patches. One thing that really makes Flex Armor stand out against other roof products like roll-on roofs is that they remove each component entirely. Flex Armor is sprayed over all seals, nuts, bolts, screws, vents, wire entry points, mounts, and corners. This is what makes the roof truly leak-proof rather than just putting a band-aid on top of an old roof. Next, they remove the wire tape, which cuts a clean finish edge throughout the Flex Armor membrane. And then they apply a white UV coat on top, which helps reduce heat and insulate the roof. From there, they remove all plastic and paper covers and let the product dry before reinstalling or installing the accessories like vent covers, solar panels, or drain cover caps. It's official, they finished the roof and I'm ready for my big reveal. I cannot wait to see how it turned out. They put so much attention and detail into the work here at the shop. It's definitely a different experience. Oh, whoa, it looks so good. Holy moly, wow! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, it's so clean. Look at the finishing lines. Babe, look at her roof! Oh my gosh, she, it looks fantastic. How good that skylight came out, man. The roof is almost sexier than the rest of the RV. You're not wrong. <laughs> There are a few upgrades that I'm super glad we went with is the radius package. They install a rigid steel edge cap. The main thing that that does for you is clean up the line really well in the transition from the roof to the sidewall. And then it adds an extra layer of protection to the edge of the roof overall. Other upgrades that you probably won't be able to notice unless you look really hard are the metal patch plates that they put in to cover any old accessory holes. Like we got rid of the local TV antenna and the water spot up in the front cap area. After my own heart, they love super clean straight lines here. So you can really tell how important that is whenever you see like their cable management runs. I'm personally very excited about the Starlink. We haven't tried it out yet, but it's gonna come in clutch when we are in Mexico. We've heard in Baja specifically, there's terrible cell reception. So we will be able to stay connected and now we have a perfect mount. They embedded mounting bolts so we can bring the Starlink onto the roof. It's the same bolting system that they use for the solar panels. If you're going to have solar panels installed for the first time or reinstalled, they took ours off and put them back on and actually changed the position to be a little bit better. From start to finish, they're just super thorough and you can tell they have so much pride in their craftsmanship. They send you text updates with picture progress reports each night. That way you know where in the process your RV is at each step of the way. They're doing their walkthrough now. Whenever they're done and give you the big reveal, they make sure to plug in the RV. They turn on the AC in the fridge just to show you that everything is working as it was before you had the roof installed. If you're interested in getting a roof, we will have a special link in the video description below for you to reach out to Arizona RV Roof to find out more about what it will cost for your specific RV. They are one of the closest shops to any of the states out west. So if you are in California or Nevada or Colorado, this is definitely the shop to come to. They do also have a sister branch in Denton, Texas, if that's more local for you. We did work with Arizona RV Roof to help make this video. We did pay for the roof. It ended up costing us around $6,500 when everything was all said and done. And I think it is 100% well worth it. We'll have a link down below. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next week. You may be wondering why we are putting a brand new... <laughs> <laughs> My teeth are gonna be so orange next to this white stuff. Oh God. Bye. We had to get rid of them. Yeah, they gotta take them off because they're gonna mess up the tarps and they're gonna get overspray all over the RV if we leave them on. And they're a little worse for wear. So <laughs> We have new ones coming. Don't worry, the horns are staying.